Church, say amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to come. We thank you for this evening service, Father. We thank you for the people that's come. Father, I just ask you to just use me as a vessel, God, just to preach your word. Just give me the strength, Lord. Just give me a double portion of your preaching power. In Jesus' name, amen. Good afternoon. Now, I will be coming to you today from Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 6 to 8. Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 6 to 8 states, Son of man, do not fear them or their words. Do not be afraid, even though their threats surround you and are like nettles and barriers and stingers of scorpions, stinging scorpions. Do not be dismayed by their dark scowls or even by their, even though they are rebellious. You must give them my message, whether they listen or not. But they won't listen, for they are a completely rebellious. Son of man, listen to what I say to you. Do not join them in their rebellions. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. If you don't mind, this evening I want to preach from the subject, I ain't scared of you. Now... Many of y'all probably laughing at me right now know where I got this from. If some of you who don't, I'm going to give you a brief history. Back in 1992, there was a brother by the name of Bernard McCullough. You know him as Bernie Mac. He coined this phrase that I'm going to use today. And if you don't mind, I'm going to walk through chapter 2 of Ezekiel. But he walked out after a guy was booed completely, completely destroyed the whole show and couldn't nobody save him. And he walked out into a hostile environment to declare to them, hey, I'm not scared of you. You can boo me. You can do whatever. Now, I'm, I was struggling with this subject because I was wondering how I'm going to present this and why God gave this to me. He told me, hey, Sometimes you're going to go to people who don't want to receive the word. Sometimes you're going to go to people who are going to look at you and be like, out of all people, you are up there preaching the word of God when I know you when you was back at Club Rodeo hanging out with me. Some of y'all don't know what Club Rodeo is. For you older people, it was Grand Central Station. Do I need to take it any further? It's the place on Kellogg. Let me stay off that subject. But he reminded me that no matter what I might do, they're looking at the past. And he said, no matter what, I'm going to send you to some people who are not going to accept it. I had to think about that. You're going to send me back. I came by to tell somebody, he's going to send you back to some people that you used to hang out with but don't realize what you, how far you came. He's going to send you back to an area where you're familiar with, but they're not familiar with the new you. And when I say new you, I mean the Christ in you. Because not too many people are going to accept that. And lately, it's not going to be people that you were close with, people that you ran with, people that you smoked with, people that you drank with, people that you was out there doing some things that I can't really say because I might tell on some of y'all's business. But he's going to send you back so that way you can declare God's promise. And one of the things that he said to me is, son of man, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I'm going to say that again. Do not be afraid. And that stuck with me because the Bible states, I am with you. It says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. So in other words, while I'm standing here telling you, but yet and still, I'm not afraid of you. 
I may be, I may look at you and be like, hey, you got something to say? Keep it to yourself. I may stand up here and say some things that might hurt your feelings. Can I tell you something? If the message is convicting you, it ain't me. God is trying to tell you something. So if God is trying to tell you something, why are you beating up the preacher for what God is trying to tell you? The preacher's job is to preach the word in season, out of season, whether you want to hear it, whether you stand to hear it, or whether you care to hear it. So in other words, I'm going to do my job, which is to preach to you what God has told me to. Now, whether you like it or not, hey, I might have took one L, but you won't whoop me. And the only L I took, um, would Jackie Staley please stand up? That's my mama. That's the only L I took because I'm not going to fight her back. So if with saying all of this, it goes back to Odell, I hear you laughing. We're not talking about track. <laughs> it goes back to chat, verse 8. And the last thing it says, eat what I have given you. Now, how can you preach to somebody if you don't know the manual? How can you tell God about his promises? I mean, how can you tell somebody about God's promises to never leave you nor forsake you, but yet and still... The only scripture that you're quoting is John 3.16. So God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But that's all you know. I believe that pastor has once said you got to elevate your Christianity. You can't be on level, a third grade reading level, but trying to preach at a 15, uh, 10th grade reading level to somebody else. You can't do that. And they're going to look at you like this. I heard... Um, what was his name? Mark, Minister Tucker. Minister Tucker says something to me. Says something that kind of, how can you go out and minister to somebody, but yet and still, you always in the church. You can't minister to somebody that's in the church. They won't come in unless you go and give them an invite. You have to go out. These four walls you have to go out of to get somebody to draw them in. So how can you minister to somebody who's already in here? To be honest, ministering on Sunday morning should either come from Reverend Terrell DeMond Davis in this pulpit to give a word to you so that way you can go out and give it to somebody who wasn't here on Sunday morning. If they was not here on Sunday morning, nine times out of ten, they didn't get the personal invite that they wanted. So... They didn't get the invite that they wanted, but yet and still, we're in here right now, Sunday after Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, doing the routine up, down, up, down, up, down, wave my hands. But yet and still, you're not out there trying to draw people in because you sitting in here doing the old ritual. I know I've been changed, but yet and still, you ain't put somebody in here who haven't been changed. But yet and still, son of man, do not be afraid. Hmm. I was telling Cameron this as we was eating. I admire my daughter because Taylor will tell you, I don't like that. I won't eat that. But yet and still, Taylor will also tell her daddy and a many, I don't like that. I won't eat that. So I have to remind her. You're talking to the wrong one. I came by to tell some of y'all today, some of you are talking to the wrong one. You're trying to tell God, I need this, I need that. But yet and still you're asking, say, can you please give me my uh, strength back? Can you please give me my faith back? But yet and still you're not demanding what God has already promised to you. You're... Mm. I'm going to leave that alone because some of y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. God, <laughs> but yet and still, a five-year-old has enough guts to tell her daddy what she wants. Five-year-old, I'm coming back to that. 
has enough guts to tell her dad what she want, what she don't want, what she's going to do, what she is going to do, no matter what the consequences is. But yet and still, some of y'all won't tell none of them demons to leave you alone. You're asking them permission. Some of y'all won't tell them that, by all means, that I'm on God's side. So how can you take what God has given to me, but yet and still you asking, can you please give it back? The last time I checked, a five-year-old is supposed to be asking, can you please give something back? If you're talking to a demon, you need to tell them, look, I don't care what get depths of hell you came from, but you're going back a loser. You're not going to take from me what God has already promised to me. So in other words, I'm not scared of you. So I'm standing here today declaring to some of you that I'm not afraid of you. But then there's something else that is pulling at me. It's another phrase that I want to ask you a question. And Sister Turner, I know this is out of not proper English, but I'm going to ask it anyway. And I want you to beat me up for it later on. But it's a question of who you with. In the proper English terms, it's who are you with? Who are you with? But I'm going to ask it the way Bernie Mac asked it. He, who you with? And I'm going to give you three. I'm going to give you three answers because this is a multiple choice. I mean, multiple guess. I'm going to ask you, who are you with? And if your answers are not God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, you have no business talking to me. Because the last time I checked, the pastor said, all I need is three. If you're not rolling with any of those three, hey, don't roll with me. Because at the end of the day, my soul belongs to God. If you're not rolling with God, you can't roll with me. Simple as that. If you're not in alignment with what God has you going for your life, if you're not in alignment, I will pray for you. I will speak life into you. I will never damn you, do anything to hurt you. But at the end of the day, if you're not riding, there's a door. Bye. Because at the end of the day, if you're not speaking life, you're not giving positive energy back now, there's going to be some days where you're going to go through so much that you don't know your right hand from your left hand. But yet and still, do you have enough strength to know that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are all right there with you? If not, then, like Mama Joy said, three and one. You can't get one without the other. And if you can tell me you can get one without the other, um, hmm. Pastor, we're going to have to have another Bible study about that. They can get one without the other because I'm going to need you to explain that to me. But at the end of it all, I need about three or four people to actually stand up and declare that no matter what you may go through through your life, no matter how bad it gets, no matter if mama goes home tomorrow, daddy goes home next week, no matter if your kids is acting up in school, no matter if you don't know how to tie your own right and left shoe, you're going to stand up and declare, no matter what, I'm not scared of you. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to take my seat. You may be a thorn in my side, a pain in my backside, but guess what? I'm on God's side. This time we want to open the doors of the church. If someone out there would start singing the beautiful Come to Jesus song. There you go. The preacher said, I ain't scared of you. If you do not know Jesus, don't be scared. Right now,
God bless you and God keep you. Though none came, there's plenty of room at the cross. Amen. Giving God, giving God the glory and praise, we just want to thank him for another opportunity to stand one more time. And we want to thank him for his servant, Sean. We know that being a minister, being in this light, you can't be scared of nobody. Because God said, if you look on them, don't fear them. Because the power that's in me is greater than the power in you. So, uh we can't look on you and, and get worried about if you're happy or if you're sad. We have to preach the word like God gave it to us. And sometimes it falls on, on people and it seems like we're picking on you. But I, I can't pick on you because I don't know where you were. I'm not following you around to see what you're doing. The word of God is just whooping you. And when God whoop you, it ain't him, it ain't me, it ain't the past. That's the word of God. And that means it's time for you to make a change. So we're going to have uh, Brother Sean come and give his closing remarks. God bless you and keep you. Brother Church, say amen. amen. I will uh, say one thing. On Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock, some of y'all have teenagers. Sunday school starts at 9 o'clock. That's all. I'm not going to put out teenagers. I'm not going to put out adults. I'm asking everybody. Sunday school starts at 9 o'clock. Come on in here, Taylor. I see you. Hello to you too, baby. If all hearts and minds are clear, Pastor, do you have anything? All right, well, our hearts and minds clear. We're standing to be dismissed. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come telling you thank you. Thank you for another opportunity to come in your house and give you the glory. Father, I ask this, as we leave here, you don't depart from us, but let us get to our destination safely. Bless every vehicle that's here, God, that they get home safely. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.